Hey uh, folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Dwarf Fortress. We have a lovely little fort going on that is little. Population hasn't really grown a bit. Hopefully we get some nice migration waves relatively soon here. Uh, and just as I was starting to record, I'd actually unpaused for just a tick beforehand. And we got some combat. There is a giant mole over here fighting with one of our doggos. So let's go and issue a bit of a kill command on that. Because that is within the perimeter of our fort, which um, does remind me that we have breached the cavern layer over here. And we do have some things moving in and out a little bit. So this is going to happen from time to time. And we're going to see if we can set up something that's a little bit nicer defensively down here relatively soon. Um, we do have a barracks over here. But yeah, we just don't have enough kind of idle dwarves sitting around to really take advantage of that. Actually, these squads not even full. Uh... Let me do that. I won't grab any of the medical dwarves. But other than that, it is interesting. So our population of 24, we actually have only 11 recruitable dwarves. Because we have 9 in the squad right now, and there's 2 more left over here. Now, some of these are going to be children. And yeah, a lot of these are just guests, too. So really, we have a population effectively of 11. Ooh, that is, that is not great. That is not ideal. All right, there we go. Copper bottle axe. Excellent. Hopefully that problem has been taken care of now. Just keeping this clean. Uh, a kitten has adopted a dwarven child. Cat explosion incoming. So there are animals that you can have as pets in here. Now, uh, you can make a dog available to become adopted as a pet, for example. You can't do that with cats. Cats have a mind of their own. What they do, cats adopt dwarves instead. So you can't really choose what happens there. Now, if you end up with too many cats that keep breeding, you can have a huge, massive uh, cat explosion, an overpopulation of cats. Now, the way to solve that now is with gelding. If you've got some, um, if you've got male cats, you can geld them to prevent uh, reproduction. Right now, we only have two female cats. Uh, assuming I spotted that. Oops. Creatures. Because there was these two. No, okay. There's not like a kitten or somewhere or somewhere else. But yeah, right here, Ficod Rithbaton. And cats do get names once they they get, you know, well, I was going to say they get adopted. But once they adopt a dwarf, uh, they do get named over here. So it's a dwarven child with a pet cat, which I think is absolutely adorable. We do have some cranky dwarves in our base too, which is not going to help our situation with our low population. But we'll do what we can. Uh, people are going to be pretty busy. I would love to start smoothing out more of our stuff over here, but I'm worried it's not really going to be an option. Got a nice bit of socializing in our tavern. I don't mind that. Includes one of our actual dwarves here, doing a little bit of meditation. Yeah, unable to pray for too long. I mean, you can pray now, which is good. Hmm. And our dining hall should be relatively nice. Yeah, let's hope those moods stand. But mostly what we need is we need some migration waves. Because our guests are only getting too much. This human swordman. Is, is this one of our permanent guests? What can we tell? If they're a permanent guest or not? I'm assuming they are. And they're just wandering on the surface to potentially kill some monsters up here. But I might be wrong. They may have just been a visitor that is now leaving. I'm not entirely sure how to read what's what. Oh, yeah, water collection. Is that actually happening over there? Yeah, you're carrying a wooden bucket. Who are you giving water to? We follow Ingish Ullungfath here, the dwarven child who is hauling a bucket of water. Ah, uh, you are. Okay, so I still actually relatively confused as to why there's a child just in a door here as opposed to being four lovers. Wow. Um, as opposed to being brought into the hospital. But yeah, that's what the water is for. Injured dwarves are given water. I mean, they're, it's used for washing, but I believe that's all, they're also given that to drink while they're in the hospital as opposed to booze, which honestly seems like cruel, unusual punishment. But Gem Cutter is fighting a Crundle. Yeah, on this cavern layer here. I'll just issue another kill command. Uh, if I can spot the Crundle. Did it die already? This combat was happening here. Is this a crundle? There's one. Oh, there's another one over there. Oh, there's a lot of crundles in here. Now, crundles, I don't know what they are. Let's check the dwarf wiki. EF crundle. What 
wouldn't describe that. Small, imp-like, reptilian creature roams in caverns. Yeah. They're not particularly threatening, but they can be a little bit annoying. Right now, I think they're mostly going to pro uh, provide some good military practice. Hey, springtime is here. Now, do we get a human caravan in spring? An no, an elven one in spring, a human one in the summer, and then the dwarven one in autumn. So, I don't know how much trade production we've got going on here with such a small population. In fact, I'm wondering about like maybe suspending various work orders just to try to... Uh, make sure the critical ones are being worked on. Okay, they, that kill command ended, although there's still plenty of crundles around here to kill. I'm wondering if I should do a little bit more purging. Keep the uh, crundle population under control. Is that? Okay, no. I was going to say, is this magma? No, it's the top of a mushroom. I said, we shouldn't have magma at this layer. I could put a few traps through this door. Actually, that seems like a pretty good idea. Let's go and do that. Um, cage traps are particularly effective. I think we're going to go and lay some out. Now, we probably don't have any cages, which means I have to order up some cages to be built, which is going to be that much more construction for our people. But I think we're going to have to. We're going to have to keep... Um, we'll just build wooden cages because we've got lots of uh, wood available. Wooden cages... We're going to want to keep a decent amount around to be able to replenish these. So I think I'll do, if we've got a deficit, queue up a job of five. Um, and yeah, keep at least like, well, I guess I could lower this. I could lower this to five. So this will effectively make us have between five and ten, well, five and nine uh, cages. Um, it has to be empty cages, not full cages. And again, this is not the maximum priority thing. So I'll say logs at least ten, even though we only need the five for the job. So we'll get those in there, and then we can start setting up some cage traps relatively soon. Oh, do we have automatic mechanism construction? Because we're going to need mechanisms for traps. Yes, we do. Um, it's pretty slow because it's just asking for one per day. I'm going to bring that up some more. There you go. So if we have fewer than 10, we'll make five because uh, we're going to need a fair amount of mechanisms for various things. Although right now we're okay. So then under traps over here, I'm going to make cage traps. Use closest material. Keep building after placement. And I'm just going to put some outside of each one of these doors here. I have way too many doors. Oh, there we go. Not enough mechanisms. You can place the traps even if you don't have the cages. Because the dwarves install the mechanisms. And then they're constantly reloading the trap with tr cages as they keep going off. So you can, as long as you get the mechanisms, you can go ahead and set those up. That's one of the reasons I like having plenty around. We should set some up on the surface as well. Um, do keep in mind, friendly units, including visitors and things, can walk through trap tiles perfectly fine, but wagons cannot. So if you wrap your entrance here around with traps, uh, traders will still come, but they won't be able to bring their wagons. Unless something has changed, but that's the way it used to be. Ah, oh, six cranky doors. Damn it. I mean... Or humans as well. Aerith, I would really like it if you were happier. Female, martial training. Oh, you actually want to join the military. All right, fine, Aerith. I will add you to the militia over here. And maybe you'll find some time for some martial training. All right. Now, there is some ask for some fine meals. Do we have a kitchen set up? And do we want to start making some food? I don't think we have a kitchen. Oh, right over here. So let's start making some fine meals. Before we do, I'm going to make sure in my labor here under kitchen, I want to make sure we are not cooking our plump helmets because, um, I mean, we've got plenty of them. Maybe we're going to be fine. But when you cook your, when you cook a, a vegetable, it, you don't get a seed out of it. It consumes the seed. Uh, during the cooking process whereas brew it, brewing or eating it raw is perfectly fine so because i'm going to be concerned with growing a lot of plump helmets i'm going to go ahead and set this up and we're just going to grow we're just going to cook with various other things that we've picked up over you know uh, gathering on the surface or if we've done some hunting or something like that we're going to go ahead and do that you can also at some point turn on seed cooking if you end up with way too many seeds, you can process it. Although, um, I think we can also just maybe press them for oils. Uh, I'm not sure about that. There's, there's a few things. You can also press the seeds into paste, which I think then can be used for cooking. And we could put a order in there where it only does it if we have more than, say, 100 seeds or something like that. But for now, I'll just make sure that the plump helmets don't get cooked. So we'll use other things. 
and I can keep doing plant gathering on the surface. So let's put in a work order. Now, in terms of meals, there's three different qualities, easy, fine, and lavish. Uh, they take more and more material to do, but they give happier and happier thoughts. I'm gonna go ahead and just start preparing lavish meals. Um, these meals can have very, very, very high value. So you really don't wanna have a lot of them sitting around your fortress because it will lead to significantly bigger attacks and raids. So we're really gonna wanna limit how much are there. Um, I'm going to, now your dwarves eat, I believe, two meals per season and four drinks per season. So um, you actually don't need to make that many and you don't need to keep that many around. I'll make them in batches of five. And so they're unrotten prepared meals. I actually might just set a target of five as well. And then I don't know how many cookable items it actually uses. I feel like it uses eight per meal on a lavish thing. I guess I got the wiki open. I can open up meal. Um, prepared meals. Lavish meal uses four ingredients. So, um, and I believe the first ingredient has to be a solid ingredient. And then after that, it could be other stuff, um, which makes it a little tricksy to decide how I want to set these filters up. Because a batch of five, I really need 20 foods of which at least four has to be solid. But they might not, they, they might take the, all the solid things for the, the very first meal and then sort of bork out after that. I think I won't put any criteria for the input. So that way we'll actually get alerts if we have a shortage here. And it'll tell us that we've got to, you know, get hunting or get farming some more. But yeah, let's go ahead and set that up. Stockpile situation here is kind of fine. And dwarves have some bedrooms. Oh, we need some cabinets. Because all this clothing on the ground, that would go into a cabinet. Did we ever build some? Yeah, there we go. Oops. Cancel you. Apparently, I don't have that many kicking around, but at least we can put one in this room here. So, who is this? Ingish. Well, that's the child. They might share this room. Um, if I do this, yeah, Foth, Thicket. Oh, can I not scroll this list? Maybe children don't show up in this. Maybe these two are a couple and the children are implied. Quite an efficient room, anyway, to have a cabinet in, as it turns out. Lots of praying going on here. This is a generic temple, right? Curated man, yeah, I believe this is our temple to no specific god, hospital, and oh, this is our library, although we haven't kitted this library out with any furniture yet. I think we did put in some work orders, but these workers are going to come pretty slow because we have so few dwarves. Please, migration wave. Please. I hope our home civilization hasn't been obliterated. No. No, 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 because we still got, we still got a merch, like, dwarven trade caravan, right? Which wouldn't happen if they'd gone away. Well, I might be wrong. Well, no, I think that is true, that they wouldn't send a caravan if the civilization was gone. But I might be wrong about whether the, the, the caravan came. I, between, um, with, the, with the live stream version of this happening at the same time, I get a little confuzzled between each one of our games. You're collecting webs down there. I mean, I pro with so few dwarves, I really probably shouldn't have them wandering around out here. There's another crundle coming in. I think I should go back to just forbidding all these doors. Now, let me say, we have to wait for that dwarf to be in. Hopefully everyone is in now. Yeah, I should have had more walls, fewer doors. I'm just gonna watch over here and respond to seeing a dwarf Hey, what are you doing? Do you not... Dwarven child? Oh. I was hitting the wrong button. I wasn't locking the door. I was forbidding the, the door object, so I think that means if I gave it like a deconstruct command, it wouldn't be brought anywhere. There you go. Now you can see that door is properly barred. Slightly annoying to have done that incorrectly. Okay. Now, we know the Dwarven Child just walked out there. There's going to gonna say, wait until they come back through and do this. And hopefully we haven't locked any Dwarves out of here anywhere along the way. 
I don't remember why I started unlocking the door. Like, I'd locked them for a while, and then I unlocked them again, and I can't remember why. Presumably these are old alerts. We'll keep an eye out to see if there's any Crundles still active in our base right now. I saw something moving over here. Is this... Is there a dwarf? There's a Crundle here. Hopefully that's all it was. Okay. I guess I can check to see if anyone's got, um, like, no job. We can zoom in on them and see if it's because they're idling outside of our locked doors. Although, right now, everyone seems to be very busy, so hopefully we're okay. Well, we'll double check from time to time. But yeah. Uh, item inaccessible. That's presumably fine. Things getting in each other's way. They might have, uh, it actually might have been a pickup job for some, for things, uh, in the cavern, which have now been made, made inaccessible because we've locked the doors. So that's entirely possible. I think I have to bring down the sound again. I brought it down a billion times during the stream. It seems to have so little difference. Um, I don't know... Like, sound is kind of funky because there's, like, some elements to it really don't work in a kind of a, a linear way, the way that we process volume and things. There we go. Hopefully that's low enough that it's not too close to my voice. I know that we had a couple of issues a couple of videos ago when I turned the music back on. Let's see. And it doesn't help that the Dwarf Fortress music is kind of inconsistent in terms of whether it's like playing or not, and some songs are a little bit louder than others. Okay, I think now we're looking a little bit better. I'm feeling a little bit better about this situation here. Yeah, hopefully we haven't locked anyone out. We'll see. There's still the possibility that some things decide to pass over the wall here, but I think it's fairly unlikely. I could go and roof this section up, and that bit as well, I guess. But I'm going to cross my fingers that I don't have to. At the very least, it should minimize how many things decide to come through here. Dedicated attackers, forgotten beasts and things like that will go over the wall, but that'll be that. What do we have here? Human bard visiting. We've got, I mean, we've got no shortage of visitors, some of which have become permanent citizens, but that's it. Yeah, need plump helmet spawn. I, we've got, I believe, tons of plump helmet. Let's double check. If we go down to the plant category, I mean, I suppose I could have searched as well, but... Um, Probably should have, because I just realized this is going to be kind of a pain in the butt. And they're not alphabetical for some reason, huh? Yeah, we have lots of plump helmet. Just has to be processed and drink or eaten raw so that um, we get more seeds. But I clearly don't have to worry about them being planted because we've got lots of it. So I'm not freaked out about that. Uh, slow trickle of barrel jobs. Migrants have arrived. Thank goodness. Let's watch this population count. Hopefully go up quite a bit. We could definitely support a good number of extra migrants at this point. I mean, I if it came if it was one of those crazy migrant waves like 30 40, I would not complain. Um all right, I'll take another bard. All right. Uh that's okay. This is definitely going to make a big difference. Cuz remember, we only really had 11 functional dwarves as it turns out. So, going up by 11 would double our effective working population. And if it, uh, I think it's gone up by 14. Were we at 26? I think we might have been. Something around there. So that's pretty good. Although some of these might be children as well. But overall, that's going to be great stuff. So the new immigrants are going to, they're going to take a little bit to, to show up, get organized before they start picking up some jobs. But this should be helpful. I really don't want to smooth all this stuff. I just don't know if that should be the priority right now. I think I do want to get ready to have some more space for some more workshops. And that, I think is relatively reasonable to do right now. So what I'm going to do is dig a little hallway like this. Uh, do that. Sorry if you just heard my phone. That's some sort of text message. Probably spam. Yeah, I guess these can't possibly be centered. But I could do... So assuming we're going to continue a hallway down this way. There we go. At least we can keep up the symmetry. Ba, 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 ba. And then just cancel that. Okay. Good. How many 
people actually assigned to mining do we have? We do have three people flagged for mining, which actually seems like a pretty big amount, given the amount of workers we have. Although, like, we did just increase our numbers, so that's going to be okay. And, I mean, the miners will do plenty of other things, so I guess that's fine. Um, I might get an extra person set to woodworking, just for when it comes up. A couple of hunters, that seems okay as well, too. Okay, good. Diggy diggy hole over here, please and thank you. Now, maybe what I should be doing, actually, is my workshops around this big stockpile over here. But we've got them in this area, and it kind of looks nice, so we're going to keep doing that for aesthetic. More than, perhaps, efficiency. I guess for efficiency, actually, the thing to do... ...would be this. A stairway here that leads here. There you go. So a couple of different options for getting to that upper stockpile. That should make our life a little bit easier, a little bit faster, a little more efficient. And other good words. Okay, we have the dormitory for overflow, not that we've got it. But yeah, this extra pop is a big deal. I think it's got an empty spot in this squad. Nope, okay, got filled in completely. What equipment is this squad? This is a, oh, it's a metal armor squad, okay. I might want to go ahead and designate an archer squad. Ah! Now I'm going to wait because we would have to make all the things that we need for that squad. Uh, you know what? I don't think we need another bard. Yeah, I'm going to say no to those two. This song's a banger. That's making me sad that the volume's not as high. Although, that's still, I'm looking at the sound meters. I don't understand. Are these audio meters not... There we go. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm looking now at the audio, the uh, the desktop audio meter, and it still seems like it's maybe a little higher in terms of uh, audio density than than I would sometimes go for. But I guess it'll be that. What are you doing here, buddy? Oh, combat drill, right? Because we do have the little barracks over there. Hey, that dwarf actually had enough free time to do a little bit of combat drill. Love it. Also, a nice little meeting over here. This is our. This is our double-purpose dining hall and tavern. Cool. I don't think our tavern has musical instruments yet. No, that's something that hopefully we can trade for. Fingers crossed. Um, I wonder if I need any other workshops right now. Um, stone workers, you often want more than one. Um, smelters is something else that we could use more. Wow, we don't even have anything cute in a smelter. Have we really just met all of our target goals here? Yeah, we've got lots of iron bars. Um, we don't have a steel industry yet. In this game, had we found... Fluxstone? No, I don't have Fluxstone. Well, let's go looking for it. So we need calcite, chalk, dolomite, limestone, or marble. More petition. No, I don't want another bard. I don't know. Maybe I should be taking all the bards, but I'm not gonna. Okay, clay's not gonna help. And we got lots of iron bearing stuff. Church's not one of them. It's probably gonna have to dig down to another cavern level. So there are um, there are actual different layers of stone and dwarf fortress that sort of operate on geological layers. So this is all rock salt. Here we got hematite. Oh, we do have chalk over here. Okay. Did I just... I just assumed we never found any because I don't see any steel making in the list, but maybe I canceled all that. Okay, so all this chalk here, that's... Yeah. Level 24. All right. Again, between the two games, I'm maybe getting a little bit confused. Uh, this can be very low priority. But let's go ahead and designate that. Yeah, I don't have any other mining going on, so it's going to happen now. Uh, so we can set up a job. So to make steel, we need pig iron. And then we can uh, smelt steel. I think it is smelt, or is it make steel bars? Make steel bars. Okay. Make pig iron, make steel bars. So we'll go ahead and do it in chunks of five. I will try to keep 
10 pig iron bars around. But to do this, we need iron bars, flux stone, and coal. Uh, and we need, we'll need five of each of these to do a successful batch of five pig iron. So we'll do that. So, the, I mean, this can go up to 14, but that's okay. So we'll have that as our buffer. And I think we'll do something very similar with steel here. Um, steel bars, you know, keep going if you've got, uh, if you've got less than 10. We need iron bars, pig iron bars, and flux stone, as well as coal. And I think, yeah, we need two pieces, um, for this process. So if we're going to do a batch of five steel, we need five iron bars, five pig iron bars, I believe five flux stone, and then I believe we would need 10 refined coal for that. Okay, so if we do this, we're going to start to generate a steel industry. Chalk's being picked up pretty quickly here. Get some lignite in here as well. You know what? I think still on priority seven. I'm actually going to designate a huge area over here because we're going to want quite a bit of it. Okay. And then, yeah, what I'll probably end up doing is building some extra smelters. Because one smelter might not be able to keep, uh, keep up with the demand. Let me check my nobility. All my rolls are filled. Yep, good. Everyone is pleased. Yes, excellent. Okay, good there. I mean, I don't have a sheriff yet uh, for, like, justice stuff. But hopefully we don't need it. No open cases. I think open cases will show up even if... Even if there is no sheriff yet, people will still, you know, note crime. It just won't be enforced. I'm a little surprised that no one snapped yet, but I'll take it. We do have some tetrahedrite over here. I guess this whole vein. So tetrahedrite is copper and silver combined. We could use that to make... Diagnose patient. Patient not resting. Um, we could use that to make silver warhammers, which are excellent. Oh, Tekkid, for the purpose of soldiering. So presumably Tekkid would be willing to join one of our squads. Interesting. I don't want to really break... I don't want to mine this floor, really. Because I don't want to have to replace the walls after. But if we happen to find some tetrahedrite on another floor... Or better yet, a Galena or native silver. Because mostly what I want is the silver, not so much the copper. This is right under a main thing. I think what I'll do, um, a slightly higher priority on a six, I'm going to do exploratory tunnels on this floor. I might do some on our higher floors. Actually, we're pretty close to the surface here. There's not much above us. Well, there's a little. Oh, there's tetrahedrite over there. Okay. Well, then let me, let's go back to normal priority, auto. Actually, I'll flag this. It'll be both the hematite and the tetrahedrite over there. Lots of people want to come and stay. I'm going to keep, I think I'm going to keep turning on the bards for now because we got a few people in here for entertainment. Let's see. So I don't think we have a job set up to smelt the hemat or the, um, the tetrahedrite. But we'll do that soon. Some of this didn't get flagged for mining. I don't know why. Uh, is this real fighting? That is hunting an Aardvark. Okay, that's fine. I wonder if it's because there's a couple of different minerals if they might be getting a little confused with the automated thing. Got limonite. So these are more metal, like uh, iron ore. Maybe it only flags more if it, like, on discovery? I don't know. It's weird. Not a big deal. Microcline doesn't, is not a uh, metal-bearing ore, but it is very cool. It's very blue. It looks really nice when we're constructing. I'm so happy we got a migration wave. This is the thing that we really needed quite desperately in our fortress, is just more people. Okay, let's set up the job for uh, tetrahedrite. I think I'm just going to let it, like, do as much as there is. But I, I don't necessarily need it to happen quite very quickly. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in batches of two. And just if you have... Um, so if we have more than one tetrahedrite, i.e. I, two or more, then try to make... Try to smelt down two tetrahedrite. Well, I suppose I'll put the refined coal at a two as well. Actually, for this, it'll be another thing where I, like... 
Yeah, you know what? It's fine. As I say, I might want to prioritize something else, but that's going to be okay. So we'll slowly smelt down the tetrahedrite. I'll probably use the copper to make bolts. Um, I mean, I think steel bolts are the best bolts, but I probably want to prioritize the steel for armor and battle axes first. But I'm really happy that the metal industry is going a little bit better. Yeah. There we go. Smelter. And in fact, I think I'm going to make an extra couple of smelters. Oop, not magma smelter. That's when we find lava. Interesting in the... Or magma, I suppose. Um, in the previous versions, the magma smelters and furnaces and things like that... Um, well, I guess those two. Well, also... The magma forge. There we go. Which is the metal smith. Um, I don't think they would show up in the menu until you actually struck lava. Magma. Not lava until it hits the surface. Um, yeah, let me put down two more of these. I don't think we're going to need more metal smiths. We just mostly you need the, the smelting to happen a little faster. Soldiering. Approved. Yeah, anyone who can keep defending us from baddies is definitely going to be very welcome. And yeah, so this staircase is built over here. So that should help these workshops especially as if this area continues to grow to be able to access the bigger uh, the bigger stockpile we might well we'll allow some more bards at some point i'm sure but for now we're going to be okay all right there we go pig iron tetrahedrite pig iron it's all being queued up over here so we'll do a little bit more of it in parallel i mean assuming we've got enough idle dwarves to pick up those jobs actually a lot of people are socializing and meditating and doing training right now which is actually telling me um that we don't have too many jobs that they can do because those are sort of downtime activities. And I'm okay with it. Like, I want them to do those things because that's one of the things that helps keep our mood up. Speaking of mood, we're now at seven cranky people. Ooh, and a strange mood. What kind of strange mood are we getting? Withdraws from society. Is that just the normal one? So you've claimed a mechanics workshop, so I guess we're going to get an artifact mechanism. Which maybe isn't the most exciting thing, but I guess is fine. Maybe we'll just end up selling it for a bunch of cash. More cabinets are coming in. That's good. We do need to get these other bedrooms up because we do have more people. Although, again, we do have the dormitory over here. In fact, I think if I have some extra beds kicking around, which I'm sure I do because I'm sure I, I queued up a bunch. I'm going to go and get a bunch of beds in the dormitory right now because that's kind of the high demand spot. And then any other beds I have going around, we'll throw in here. I suspect that I did some math at some point for number of beds, and I'm assuming I'm going to run out for the bedrooms here. There we go. One, two, three, four more. And at a glance, I'm not seeing them in the work order list. So I'm going to say make bed. Four more beds, please. Mysterious construction has begun. Excellent. What did you take? Lignite. You're making a highly flammable artifact there, buddy. And then some wood for even more flammability. Okay. I mean, I guess that's fine. Sure, maybe. I don't know. Doors. Still have our artifact door on display in the dining hall. Oh, that, like, doesn't do anything. Dwarves can just sit there and, like, they can just, like, open it and close it. Like, they can just swing it and, like, marvel at how smoothly it, um, it opens and closes. You know, probably perfectly silently. Oh, uh, just lovely. It doesn't do anything. But dwarves are just sitting there marveling at it, opening and closing the doors. Do we have more chests for these rooms? Good. And I know that we had queued up tons of cabinets. Okay, empty those. Um, cabinet. That click didn't take for some reason. There you go. Hang on, we're gonna let me just finish clicking here. We'll take a look at the artifact, and that'll be that for this episode. Okay, done there. What is our artifact? Objects. Gikut Lemul, the dabbling gold. This is a lignite mechanism. All crafts warpship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with cushion lignite cabochons and encircled with bands of rectangular lignite cabochons. This object menaces with spikes of lignite. On the item is the image of a radish plant in carambola wood. Wow, that is um, that is some art there. Currently estimated about 3,000 dwarf bucks. I don't think we have a tremendous appraiser. Ooh, you know what? Before we actually go, because we've got some new dwarves cycling in, I wonder if there's any chance that we've got ourselves a better broker. 
Is Rimtar doing it right now? Yeah, Rimtar is doing it. They have all the social skills. Um, when you when you open a trade window with a caravan for the very first time, they get experience on appraising. Um, and then for every trade they do, they get a little bit of experience towards the other things. So in a theory, you can power up the other social skills by doing lots of little trades, but it's microscopic amounts of XP. You have to do like, I don't remember what the wiki page said, but it was like, you're gonna have to do like hundreds of trades to get to like legendary social skills, which I don't think is worth grinding. Um, so you're really hoping that dwarves show up with good skills, but yeah, looks like Rimtar is still the ideal broker over there. Um, in terms of bookkeeping, Atir's got the best thing, uh, managing. Can we take the load off of Rimtar? No, we have no other people with um, the organizer skill right now. So I guess all of our nobles are still okay. I think once our population reaches, I think it's 50, we will elect a mayor. So instead of expedition leader, a mayor will be elected. We don't assign that. It gets elected, and they will need some fancier digs. So we are going to want to get ready to get some noble quarters relatively soon. But I think for now, we're still okay. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching another episode. I'm going to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.